All right, welcome back to the Dutch Investor Channel. I have a DGOC update for you today, and I have uh, received your feedback in regards to the background and what was easier on the eyes. So I've changed a bit as well to let me know if it's better. And um, yeah, you know I uh, I own a lot of DGOC stock. I think it's important when you own a lot of stock that you of a certain company that you keep a good eye on it. So when it comes to TGOC, I intend to give an update whenever there is a need for an update because uh, I have a feeling that there may be some other people out there that have have like increased their position in TGOC recently because yeah things are looking very great. Then that means that you might be might not be completely traditionally diversified. No pun intended actually, but. Um, yeah, you know, I don't really care about diversification that much. But that does mean that I need to keep a good eye on it. And I would like to share that with you. So, a trading update, Q1 2020. Let's start with the first part. The announcement of the Q1 2020 dividends. They announced the same dividend as last quarter. So, dividend has not dropped. I have received a lot of questions because... Even though I have people have seen my videos, they still doubt a bit in regards to are the dividends going to be paid? Are they going to lower it? Are they unsure, uncertain? Like, I understand if you follow the news and you look at gas and you look at oil, you're going to be like, what is going on? You shouldn't invest here. It's too risky. But if you know that they hedge, <coughs> you know what hedging is. And yeah, if you've seen my videos about it, then you know the impact of hedging then you basically can be assured that, or reassured maybe, that the dividend is guaranteed. So the ex-dividend date is 3 September. In general, if you're a long-term shareholder, the ex-dividend dates don't really matter that much in my opinion. But if you want to buy it before the dividend uh, yield, like if you want to receive this the, the quarter dividend, you have to buy it on the 2nd and buy and hold on the 2nd of September. So keep that in mind if that is your tactic. Uh, I don't suggest it though, but I just think you should buy it whenever you think it's attractively priced and you shouldn't keep the dividend date in mind. So that's basically it. Just wanna keep it short for this one. For this part, I should say, because I don't, uh, I didn't mean to intend that I was gonna be done. Um, that would be a very short video. Maybe preferred to some, but it's going to be a bit longer than that. Let's follow up with the highlights. Um, they had 94,000 barrels of oil equivalent production per day. This is a less than 1% drop than the previous quarter. I think if you look at this number, 564 million cubic feet, and here you see 568, or let's say 569, you see that it barely dropped 1%. I think it's like 0.2% drop. Something like that. Uh, if I think back of the sheets and when I went through it, I think annually you can expect like a 3% drop. I think that is something that you uh, should keep in mind. So this is actually very good. Like uh, if, if their plans would be to, like their the way they have their business, it would probably, it should have dropped a little bit more. So in general, it's been, it, this is a positive news, even though it may not, seem like that because you see a production decline but this is basically what the business is about and just to confirm here like zero percent net decline during the period from the company's legacy if you want to check out like all the footnotes like i'll leave a link in the, in the description and then you can check it out yourself and read this and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i would love for you to learn more about it so the next part recent financial highlights a lot of information here i'm just going to stick to the basics i think we've covered most of it but i think it's just good to, to go over it again and to make sure that everything is still in play and is still going as expected so they will be trading on the main market on the 18th of may 2020 which is well, exactly in four or in two weeks so that's very good like here you just see the production but we already know what they were going to get as a what do you say uh, as a as a revenue 
basically because of the hedging. So I'm not going to go over that. I do want to go over to this part. Total unit cash expenses. $1.16 per... Oh, I don't even know what this is for. Let's MCFE. I guess that's how you pronounce it. We'll stick it to like that. Million cubic feet equivalent or something, I guess. So what does this mean? If you look at this and you compare it to a year ago, it dropped by 22%. This is cost, so this is cost reduction, which is insane. If you compare it to one quarter, it's about uh, well, less than 2% drop. But this is already a very low production cost. If you think that uh, the, average, the average cost of production in the same area is twice plus this amount. Like I think it's 270 to $3. That's why most of them are on the brink of going bankrupt. Because yeah, even if they hedged 90% at 270, that 10% is going to be a big problem when it's trading below their cost of production. So this is very good. I like that they are constantly focusing on reducing the cash cost. If they are able to acquire the acquisition that we've been talking about before, then the cost will go probably a little bit lower, but this is already so low. Like imagine that the, the lowest the gas was trading at the lowest uh, it's ever traded. I believe, and it was at 150, so they would still be profitable if it would stick at that level. That's that's insane. Positive, positively insane. Next part: an expanded hedge portfolio with 90% of 2020 and 90% of 2021 hedge 273, 259, respectively. So something that we haven't seen before is that 2021 is basically completely hedged. As of today or I should say as of Q1 2020 it is hedged at a lower price which makes sense because yeah the prices were trading lower does this bother me am I worried about uh, dividends being lowered or cash flow being lowered because I tend to care for cash flow not that much why not because this is basically 18 months from now I think it could very well be the case that gas will be trading at about $3 at that point. What does that mean? That even if, like if it doesn't, they have this price. If it does trade at $3, they have the $3 price. So it would look good. Will they stay, have a very good dividend at this price? Yeah, they will. Everything looks very good. This is just backup. This is backup at that point. The fact that they have this price during these turbulent times is great. And if it, Times get even worse. Let's say all the companies in the U.S. shale gas are able to maintain this or are able to stay afloat for a longer period of time. Then it's good that they have this just as a backup. So I'm not that worried about it. Um, and as you guys know, I'm not a dividend investor. So if it drops a little, I don't mind as long as it stays at 40% of their free cash flow because I do not want the business to be uh, impacted by a... A steady dividend while the cash flow lowers so you can read all the other parts if you want to i just want to go to the final bit it's a current available liquidity of 190 million dollars so they can do a nice acquisition when necessary lost almost the last part this is the last part of the announcement uh, announcement and we'll end with the message from the ceo uh, they have an update on the conditional purchase and sale agreement. Uh, this is the one I talked about previously. It's the Carbon Energy Corporation. Um, there's not much news, but they are busy doing the due diligence and they will provide an update in due course. course. So, yes, I think we could have next to the acquisition or next to the move to the main market, I think we could have some good news uh, somewhere around June. And that could increase production and increase dividends as well. And um, at the bottom, they have increased their revolving credit facility. Uh, it's 425 million. This is just backup money. Like they're not going to go over 2.5 uh, debt to EBITDA ratio. So it's not like they're going to use everything of this. But if they need the money, they have it. If they need to pay wages, if they want to make sure that they can pay out the dividend, yeah, they have it. But they're not going to use it they're going to stick to there to a net debt to EBITDA of 2.5 and it's right about 2.3 right now so they can do an acquisition but they cannot do like two three acquisitions even though they have the money for it I do believe that they have announced that they 
uh, like a year ago, they said that they would be willing to go even further than 2.5 if it was a lucrative business. So I personally, because I know that they have a very good business, I personally personally would hope that because I think it's going to be, they're going to grow further. They're going to grow faster. It's going to be better for shareholders. I don't think that the balance sheet will be impacted. Uh, it will look less healthy, but we know the business model, so we're not that worried about it. But it has to be a very good opportunity. And since the gas prices are increasing again, I'm I'm a little bit hesitant about that. On to the final bit. The CEO message, like the you can read this first part if you want. You can also um, I'll leave a link in the description, or you can pause the video. But I would like to focus on this part because uh, the first part is basically what we've heard before it's the same story it's more of the same which is very positive but i'm not going to keep repeating that i think this this part is very interesting i think you'll learn a lot so i'm just going to read it out loud to you i'm also encouraged by the improved pricing outlook for natural gas while oil makes up just about one percent of our production dramatically lower oil prices combined with the fundamentally changed outlook for oil has shale oil developers particularly within the Permian Basin, moving quickly to significantly reduce spending on new shale oil wells that, as a byproduct, also produce large amounts of associated gas. This behavioral shift is expected to therefore reduce the supply side of natural gas while demand remains stable despite the ongoing pandemic, benefiting from continued transition from coal to natural gas-fired electricity. So while we are mostly focused on the business i like that the ceo actually shows that he knows what he's doing and he has obviously it's it's mandatory that he knows this but it's good that he is also looking at the 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 broader perspective of things and he knows what's impactful and he actually likes the the movement and i think it's just interesting to 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 hear his vision on it so he he, he knows that yeah low oil prices will make sure that they people have to stop producing oil when they stop producing oil they won't produce as much gas so yeah gas will not be produced as much but this, uh, the demand will stay the same so prices will increase so that's basic economics but it's still very good to read that and just finally i would like to read Having now formally announced our plans to transition from AIM to a premium listing on the main market, I remain optimistic as ever, and that's the point, optimistic as ever about DGO's future as we continue to evaluate ways to create long-term sustainable value for shareholders. Obviously, this is very important. So all in all, it's looking very good. Um, there's not much news in this update. But no news can also be good news, especially in these turbulent times. Because if you look at any other company, you know, you're you basically expecting bad news, right? So, at least with most companies. So that's it for today. Um, let me give you a quick update on what I have planned. Um, I've received a lot of requests in regards to my previous video, which was about how to find great stocks. People want me to continue and show them how... I do my research from that moment on forward if like a company looks interesting. So while there's a lot more to it, I do want to explain to you what my next step would be. And I'm going to show you a bit how you can do that. So I like that's going to be interesting, I think. Why am I doing that? Because I just want you to become a better investor. Like I've been thinking about what my goal is with this, this channel. And I dislike that the whole sentiment around investing is that as an individual you can't beat the market just because hedge fund managers can't beat the indexes and i just like that i think you stand a great chance if you have enough knowledge about stuff i think if you just invest in djc and it doesn't go bankrupt which i think is highly unlikely at this price you'll probably beat the market the next 10 years easily because you get a higher dividend yield than the market return is expected than the expected market return sorry so i just want you to become a better investor and i think me explaining to you how to do stock research will actually help you with that and i want to continue explaining to you the fundamental analysis when looking at uh, in this case cash flow statements uh, cash flow statements is a difficult one so i'm taking my time for it uh, I need to get my head straight and make sure that I'm explaining it in a good manner because I've been I've had it explained in in, in master master classes and I didn't like the way they explained it. So I think 
I'll make sure that you understand it. I'll make sure that you like reading it as well. That's my goal. And after that, I just want to continue with the balance sheet and uh, like just trick tips and tricks around the fundamental analysis. So that's all planned. I hope to get some stuff done. Uh, I won't be home this weekend, I believe. So I don't know. I'm hoping I get stuff done. Uh, stay tuned. And for now, have a um, yeah, wonderful evening and uh, catch you guys later.